Good afternoon, Rick, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Larry Crothers here from uh, Kitali, Kenya. Going to run you through a five or six minute video of uh, what's involved with repairing uh, broken wells in town and out of town. This is uh, Bukat, one of the regions we do. It's a typical house, a nice house, probably for his most recent wife. Not uncommon for a Bukat man to have uh, two or three wives, each have their own house while the husband sleeps outside. Here we are uh, loading up our truck, various sizes of uh, pipes and linkage, uh, gasket seals, pumps, etc. And our tools and camping equipment before we head out for three, four days at a time. Uh, this here, uh, I happen to be here about three hour, three days before, about three years before this picture. We we're doing a medical outreach, and I found a broken well. And uh, I just said, someday I'm going to come back. I don't know how or when and repair it as well. So it was the first one we did in Pukat. It was an easy fix. A uh, simple uh, foot valve where it hooks up the linkage. It took us about four hours to repair it, and it was fixed. Um, this is uh, us repairing uh, a pump. The pump's at the bottom of all the uh, piping. We typically be repairing wells that are uh, anywhere from 40 to 70 feet deep and uh, the pump is at the bottom. And uh, at least half the time the, the pump is the problem. It could be a part of the problem, uh, but typically it's involved. So we, we typically, if we can, replace the pump once we pull it out, whether it's the problem or not, because it, it'll break sooner or later, probably sooner. We come across this project here, and if you look at the year, this is about two and a half years before we, uh, we got across it, came across it, and uh, it was already broken down a solar uh, a solar project electric uh, powered by solar and they hadn't been working for a while we we're able to get uh, one of the pumps going and it happened to be for the, the trough for the animals but nevertheless uh, it's potable and the women have started hauling it as soon as we filled it up uh, before the uh, before the goats got in here now maybe a thousand people will use this borehole but it'll uh, It'll provide water for two to three thousand heads of livestock, most of them goats, some camels, some cows. Uh, repairing a well at a dispensary where they have a little bit of medicine, so it's good to have water when you get there after walking for a couple hours. Uh, we always have a large audience uh, wanting to help or see what's happening. We're the, we're the highlight of the day, uh, but they're, they're friendly people, really nice. Uh, this is our camping setup because we usually uh, only spend one or two days uh, or one night at a well repairing it. So we travel light with hammocks and uh, tarps. It was supposed to pour rain that night. And um, there's a lot of fighting and killing because there's so much cattle rustling in this area because there's three tribes close to the border sharing their borders here. And so sometimes the chief insists that we pay for uh, security, but it's just a bit of a scam. Uh, we pay them and they give a kickback to the chief, but it's always fun talking to the soldiers. Uh, this is a, uh, a water hole we ran across that day with this disgusting effervescent type of floating on top. Unfortunately, they don't use it for drinking, just for domestic. But uh, the well that we fixed there that you saw earlier, uh, well, uh, there's no need to go back to that hole anymore. Now we're back in Catelli in, uh, in the Kipsongo slum. About 250 families, about 1,200 people. They had three boreholes. Two of them were broken. My buddy was in town here visiting for a couple of days, and uh, I said, "Hey, look at that! Uh, I got let's go, let's go fix a well." So we went down there, and this very first one, it, it only cost us five dollars for a rubber seal. The second one cost closer to 500, but two wells, 550 bucks, two days, uh, water now for 1,200 people. I've uh, I've repaired these wells so often. Uh, now the plan is just to uh, remove them and uh, put a cement cover over them with an access door and tell everybody bring your own bucket and rope. Uh, then they'll have ongoing water because the kids just rip them apart. Literally, it's the children they, that are undisciplined and they, they destroy them. Uh, this is another water project out in, uh, in the bush. You can see here this is a piping gravity fed from a waterfall. And uh, in a little video, wow! I, I, I took two of my oldest sons out there to help me repair this one. Okay. 
Now that's Papa down there. The truck. The waterfall. Pocot. Beautiful wow. country. Beautiful. And this is the bottom. You can see up here. This is where the video was taken. And there's a large pool of water behind that rock. But it comes through the rock. It's sort of like a Moses thing. And uh, we just uh, ran a fix some pipe and got an old um, uh, fire hose and uh, the dispensers of water there for the, the people in the area. And uh, this is back in Catelli. So the uh, the slum is only about a half a mile from there. And this is a schoolyard and they hadn't had any fresh water and they had to carry it for quite a while. And they came over and asked if we could repair their well. So we did. And uh, here's a little video. Of the kids when they, they came out at recess to find out that uh, they had water, fresh water, and that to haul it, and they were quite excited as we were. I tell you, the children are the best part of it from here. So uh, that's the end of the video. So I just want to thank you uh, for your consideration. We'd love to partner up with you. We feel that uh, you can get a, a lot done. Uh, a lot of hate the term, but bang for the dollar. And so, once again, thank you for thinking of us. Thank you, Rick, and uh, God bless you all. Bye now.